friends, Santiago Cifra here from the Cifra Center with this week's video. Actually, Professor Cifra, since we're going to be speaking about yin yang knowledge or about the yin yang, it's one of the subjects that people have asked us to talk about just because they want to know um, is it about balance? That's what it means. It's a model, right? Uh, and it is about balance. I, it means, you know, a perfect condition of balance, but we need to understand a little bit more. The concept of the yin yang first appeared in the Book of Changes, famous I Ching, 700 years before Christ, BC, called the Book of Changes. And what happens is that this concept of the yin yang is the most important concept in ancient Chinese philosophy, still to today. And it's a concept that, amazingly so, is very similar to a model of the universe or the cosmology, uh, and, and it shares many similarities to what we know in modern physics of how we understand the universe. The people who developed this great model, okay, they are called the, the naturalist school. And this theory was developed during the, the so-called Warring States period. That's about 476 to 221 before Christ, so a long time ago. And as I said, it has amazing parallels, para, parallels I'm sorry, to modern physics understanding of the Big Bang, you know, the Big Bang theory, how it's thought that the universe came about, at least the universe that we can recognize, um, and the universe as it was born, you know, until now, you know, so beginning 3,000 years ago, they're trying, and you could call them the early Chinese physicists, trying to make observations with their rudimentary instruments uh, and observations to come to a theory and to have a model that could explain this reality, which I think is an amazing model. <clears throat> so how is it similar to what we think about? Well, and we're going to start first with the concepts for, that relate to uh, the cosmos and the universe, and then we'll see how it relates to us in, the, in, in our reality. In other words, that's a microcosm. And we here on planet Earth are more in the microcosm, but of course we're influenced by everything that happens in the microcosm according to his theory. The outer circle, amazingly so, is reflective of the fact that the universe is in expansion since it was created. So, at the beginning, there was just a big void and nothing else. And because of conditions that we don't understand, there was a huge explosion something Im immense happened. And at, at, out of this immensity was born the cosmos, the universe, ruled by the forces of the yin and the yang. And the forces of the yin and the yang created the energies, the cosmological energies that the Chinese called the qi. Okay? So, just like in modern physics, the universe right now is in a state of expansion, circulating. To the outer edge. And the forces inside that circulation of the galaxies, of everything that's happening up there, are what look like two fish. Now, the big fish has a small little circle inside of it, so for the other one, which means that this energies, okay, let's just call it for now negative, just like a pole, positive and negative contain part of the opposite, okay? And the same for this one. So what does that mean? Very similar to, it's like the Milky Way, and yeah? you look at it, it's a centrifugal force. It's an expansion. How were they able to know this with their limited, you know, instruments and resources? It's an incredible thing. So basically, one of the things that this is saying is that the universe is in a chaotic inter interchange of energy. And it maintains all of this within this balance. Okay? Secondary is that the theory of Einstein, E equals mc squared, 
it's the same here. The universe is made out of yin and yang energies. And the yin and yang it produce a, a chi. Okay? And also that everything is in a constant state of dynamic balance and flux. Nothing can stay the same. Nothing can stop its movement. Because that creates what is called entropy, which is kind of like similar as stagnation. When things are not moving according to a system, bad things happen. And furthermore, the, or the last concept I'm going to share with you is that this reality, this one thing transforms into each other. So basically that, that the opposite is contained within the other. And it's all in a constant state of flux. And we will see now how this actually relates to more mundane things like living here on Earth. So the versatility of this early model uh, allowed the ancient Chinese to develop a lot of things that really helped their civilization. One of the most useful ones is that they, from this model, they uh, found a way of organizing reality, concepts of reality you know, under the heading, so yin and yang. For example, you know, yang in material, yin material. The sun, yang, the moon, yin. The day, yang, the night, yin. Energy, yang, matter, yin. Fire, yang, water, yin. And within this, that all of these forces, both in the macrocosm up there and here, are all uh, interdependent. So we are interdependent with everything. Imagine what this means in terms right now of like for example the damage that we're doing to this planet you know that's causing uh, not only global warming but all of the all of the destruction that's causing everything is all interdependent <clears throat> and we do not keep the balance, the chaotic balance that is proposed going well uh, at some point all hell is going to break loose that it has happened before. Also, I, you know, another of the things that they elucidated, the ancient Chinese, I, I, this is one of my favorite ones because it's like, wow, hello, is that half of reality, only half of reality, can be understood by objectivism, things that you can see, touch, observe, and the other half is subjective. It cannot be seen, touched, or observed. And that, you know, subjective reality Okay, if you want to call it that way, it has 10% of objectivism inside. And objective reality has 10% of subjectivism inside. Imagine the, what this, how this relates to science and, and a medicine, uh, especially if you are going to ignore the subjective components, which is actually what we do. Uh, we're experts at that. And uh, also, they allow them to... Uh, organize simple, what we think are simple things right now, like the seasons and the different, you know, the east, west, north, south, and of course, in the context of, of, of medicine, <laughs> the development of the Chinese medical system is based on the eight parameters that you can also put under the yin yang heading, which are the internal, the external, the excess, the deficiency, the hot, and the cold. Uh, of course, all that organized within yin and yang, that's make the eight. And, you know, for example, there are yin organs. Um, they were identified as the dense organs. They have a function in physiology that's complementary, like everything, interdependent, uh, with the yang organs that tend to be the hollow organs. So, and we can keep going. The, um, the concept of yin-yang theory has, is so huge. And it's amazing that it's 3,000 years, and it still is, we can still develop it, how it relates to the, to the, to the cosmos, the macrocosmos, to our life here, to medicine, so important. Uh, and I hope that you find this uh, interesting and useful, like, as usual. Uh, send us some feedback, uh, give us a like, uh, share uh, with people. And from here, we have next week a special uh, little project for you. So... I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you for watching.